Hello everypony and welcome back to the second part of A Valentine's Catastrophe by FriedChicken96 on FemFiction.net. Continue on from where we left off, let's get started. The next day was Valentine's Day, and we all went over to Rarity's house so the two could get dressed for their dates and the rest of us could get some disguises. I still can't believe we're doing this. I feel like this is a bad idea. Don't worry, Sunset, we've got this. What's the worst thing that could happen? Pinky asked, going through Rarity's closet. Well, Twilight could see through our disguises and get mad at us for trying to earn her date, I began. Or the restaurant staff could remember that they never hired a Marachi band and we could get kicked out. There, that's two things. Oh, don't be silly, Sunset. We'll be fine, Pinky said, pulling the sombrero on her head. I don't know, Sugar Cube. I think Sunset might be right. There are plenty of ways this can go wrong. Besides, we don't even know any Spanish songs, Applejack said. Well, do you guys have any better ideas? Pinky asked. We could just leave them alone and let them have their date, I suggested. That doesn't count as a better idea. If we just let them date, then Flash could steal her heart away for good and you'll never get your chance. I sighed. And that's okay, Pinky. I think it's really sweet of you for trying to help me like this, but maybe it's just not meant to be. Besides, I don't think dressing up as a Marachi band is going to help us much. Pinky frowned. No, Sunset, please don't give up like that. Ever since Flash found out about your journal, your smile vanished. Now all I see from you are fake smiles, and I just can't sit around doing nothing when somebody has taken my friend's smile away. Well, wow. How can I say no to something that sweet? Pinky's right, Rainbow said. I mean, this does seem like kind of a crazy plan and all, but you can't give up. Sometimes you just have to think of your own happiness, and if you never tell Twilight how you feel just because you want her to be happy, then you're just going to be sad. I smiled. What did I do to deserve friends like them? You guys are right. I guess I do deserve a chance. Still, I think we should rethink our plan. I don't think being in a Marachi band will help me confess to Twilight. Pinky grinned. Anything to keep you smiling. Do you have anything in mind? Hmm, I thought. Couldn't we just watch them from a few tables over? We could even tell Twilight that we just wanted to have a girl's date. That way we won't have any secrets or disguises. Just honesty. That sounds good to me. Applejack chuckled. Pinky tapped her chin and thought. So we can spy on them. But what do we do if they start getting all romantic? We can't let the date go that well. I know. Rainbow answered. We can be sneaky and mess up their orders and stuff. I have plenty of ideas for things we can do. I feel kind of bad about messing up their date, but this may be the only chance I have. All right, I say. If we're going on a girl's date, we might as well dress up too, right? I think looking for dresses will be more fun than looking for costumes has been. I'm pretty sure Rarity makes more dresses than costumes anyway. Ugh, I hate getting dressed up, Rainbow complained. It's too much work. But, Rainbow, you have to wear something nice on a dinner date especially if it's at a fancy restaurant. Fluttershy spoke. Yeah! Pinky exclaimed. And we gotta make sure Sunset looks extra pretty so that way she can really impress Twilight. I guess Rarity would know what would work best. We should get her help. We then left the costume closet and entered Rarity's studio where she was finishing doing Twilight's hair. They were both dressed up nicely. Rarity wearing a sparkly blue gown and Twilight wearing a green dress that looked to be styled from the 1950s. She looked absolutely stunning. I felt my cheeks grow hot when she turned to me and smiled. I swear the cat girl's smile could kill me. Rarity turned Twilight's head back to the mirror, interrupting me from my thoughts. Now, Twilight, dear, you must keep your head still while I'm curling your hair. Oh, hello, girls. She finally noticed us. Do you need something? Pinky answered. We were thinking, and it decided it's not fair that you both have dates and none of us do, so we're going to have a girl's date. Can we borrow your dresses? Rarity beamed. Well, that sounds like a lovely idea. I'll be done with Twilight's hair in just a second, and I'll make sure to find something fabulous for each of you to wear. It wasn't long before Twilight's hair was done, and it hung in soft curls around her face and past her shoulders. Applejack pinched me to make me stop staring. Rarity pulled out one of her dress racks and shuffled through the dresses. I always make sure to have dresses prepared for special occasions. It's important to be prepared, after all. Only problem is I never got your measurements, Sunset, 
So I hope I can find something that fits. Rarity walked over to her desk and grabbed some measuring tape, wrapped it around my waist, and then held it up to my shoulders. Yes, I should definitely have something that will fit you. Now, what color would be best? Magenta would be nice, but something azure would match your eyes. Hmm. Rarity chose three different dresses and handed them to me. Try these on. Twilight, would you be a dear and give Sunset a hand if she needs it? I still need to find dresses for the others. Of course, she said with a smile. I stared at Rarity aghast. She simply responded with a wink that seemed to say, You'll thank me for this later. Twilight and I walked over to the dressing room. Why don't you just wait outside, and I'll let you know if I need any help. That's fine. Just come out to show me when you're done changing, she instructed. I closed the curtain, undressed, and took the first dress off its hanger. It was a black halter top with a low back. It seemed more like a kind of dress you wear it to at a nightclub. Thankfully, I had no problems putting it on, but it showed a lot more skin than I really wanted. I had to admit I looked kind of hot in it, but I was a little nervous to show Twilight. I'm positive Rarity did this on purpose. I opened the curtain and stepped out to show Twilight. What do you think? I asked. I looked up nervously to see her reaction. Was she... blushing? I shook my head. I must have been imagining things. It looks nice, she said. Why not you go ahead and try on others? The next dress I tried on was a bit too small and I struggled trying to pull it over my hips. And then I heard some of the stitching tear. I don't think this one fits. Do you need some help? She didn't wait for my answer before opening the curtain on me. I had only managed to get the dress halfway on, so Twilight got a full view of my bra. I am sure my face m must have turned bright red. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Twilight blushed. I, 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 I didn't realize that. It, it's okay, just help me get the rest of this on. I put my arms through the sleeves. I just need you to zip up the back. I turned so my back faced her. Twilight wordlessly pulled the zipper up, only for it to stuck around the middle. I felt her cold hands on my back as she tried to get the zipper to stop sticking. I don't think I can get it, she finally admitted. That's okay. I'll just try on the next one. She unzipped the back and left me to change to the next one. I'm pretty sure both of us were embarrassed about what just happened. Luckily, I had no problems getting the next dress on, and it fit rather nicely. The dress was light blue, and the bottom had a sheer black cloth with a floral pattern overlapping it. I opened the curtain to show Twilight. Wow, that looks really great on you. You look really cute. She grinned widely. I blushed. I guess it's a bit different from the whole bad girl look, huh? It is, but I like it, she replied. Her opinion was enough for me to decide that the dress was perfect. All right, then. Let's go tell Rarity. We walked to the other side of the room where Rarity was picking out dresses for the other girls. You look lovely, darling. Good choice. Now give me just a few minutes and I'll start doing your hair. She tied my hair up into a tight bun on the top of my head, leaving a few strands out of to frame my face. I hate to admit it, but I felt really pretty. It's funny how just putting on a dress and having your hair done can do that to you. We went to a fancy Mexican restaurant called Palacio de la Rosas. It was structured like a large mud house, with a colorful tiled floor and a large fountain in the middle of the restaurant. I wonder if the boys could really afford to take Twyla and Rarity here, considering they were just high schoolers. Twyla and Rarity sat with their dates at a table next to the fountain, and the rest of us sat at a booth on the edge of the room. We had a full view of them, but they weren't within earshot. I glanced across the room at them. They seemed to be having a pretty good time, and it looked as though Twilight was laughing at something Flash said. I sighed and stared down at the table. Turn that frown upside down, Sunset, Pinky said. We're going to make sure they have the worst date ever. Well, do you have any ideas on what you can do? Applejack asked. What can we do when they're way over there? Pinkie Pie always has a plan, Applejack. Don't you know me by now? Pinkie asked, pointing a finger in her face. I even came up with code names. Code blue means one of us goes to the bathroom and passes by their table really slowly to eavesdrop. Code yellow means when... You're on your way to the bathroom, cause some sort of chaos, like bumping into their table and spilling their drinks on them. And Code Red means we need to do something super crazy before they have a super romantic moment. Um, Pinky, Fluttershy whispered, fiddling with the ends of her hair. I'm not sure how I feel about messing up their date. It just seems really rude. Yeah, I agreed. I don't think this is really fair to Flash. 
But Flash has been mean to you plenty of times. Like the time we were performing and you knocked Rainbow down and he was all like, There's the, that bad girl we love to hate, Pinky mocked. Yeah, but he got mad at you because you wouldn't let him write to Twilight in your journal and said you were acting like your old self. But, and then he made Twilight cry. So what if he was under the dazzling spell he made her cry? It's true, he did make Twilight cry. But before I was changed by the elements of harmony, I was pretty awful to Twilight, too. If I compare the two of us, I've definitely hurt Twilight more. But, Pinky, no time! Code Blue, the waitress is taking their order. Go, Sunset, go to the bathroom fast! I groaned and got out of my seat walking over to the bathroom, but making sure to get within earshot of Twilight's table. Flash was speaking. I'd like the red chili enchiladas, please. The waitress wrote in her notebook and then gestured to Twilight. And what would you like, miss? I really don't know much about the food here. I guess I'll have the same thing. I saw her smile out of the corner of my eye. Sweet Celestia, she has no idea what's in the food here. I'm pretty sure there's meat in that dish, and I doubt she'll be able to handle that much spice. It's rare for any equestrian to like spicy food since we mostly eat grains. Give me the most expensive item on the menu, I heard Blue Blood say. Damn, he must be loaded. I couldn't stall any more and could no longer hear their conversation. I waited a few minutes in the bathroom so I wouldn't seem suspicious. Just as I was about to leave, Twilight walked in. Oh, hey, Sunset, she said with an innocent smile. How does she manage to pull off such a cute smile? Hey, Twilight, how's your date going? I faked a smile. It's been pretty nice so far, but Blue Blood's being pretty obnoxious the whole time. The rarity in my world once got a date with him, too, so I don't think this is going to go very well for her either. So what happened? I asked. I really don't know, but Rarity made it pretty clear that she never wanted to see him again afterwards. Twilight shuddered. That really wasn't a fun night for any of us. Looks like this date might just ruin itself. So how about Flash? Are you having fun with him at least? Yeah, it's been pretty fun. He keeps mocking Blue Blood when he's not looking. It's pretty funny. She smiled. Guess I spoke too soon. Y you really like Flash, don't you? I asked, though I knew hearing the answer would probably torture me. She blushed. I guess so. I mean, I don't know him that well, yet... But something about him just makes me nervous and happy at the same time. It's kind of weird, I guess. I forced a smile. Well, I hope that it goes well. The lie left a bitter taste in my mouth. Twilight frowned. What's wrong? Nothing. What made you think anything was wrong? I asked, doing my best to fake it. Twilight gasped. You and Flash used to date. I'm so sorry, I totally forgot. This must be kind of hard for you, and I've just been rubbing it in. I'm really sorry, Sunset. She said and grabbed my hands. She had such an earnest look of concern on her face, but she had no idea why I was really upset. I felt like I was going to cry. I didn't know what to say. Instead, I pulled her into a tight hug, doing my best to hold back tears. Sunset? You have nothing to be sorry for. I managed to choke out. Don't worry about me, okay? I broke the hug and looked her in the eyes with the best smile I could manage. Have fun on your date. I left the bathroom without waiting for a response. I wiped away the tears that I managed to form at the corners of my eyes and walked slowly back to the table, making sure to take deep breaths to calm myself down. Okay, soldier, give me your report. Pinky asked as soon as I sat back down. I sighed. Twilight and Flash both ordered same spicy enchiladas, and then I talked to Twilight in the bathroom. Pinky frowned. Well, what did she say? That the date was going well, and she likes Flash. Well, I guess this calls for a code yellow. Pinky gave a weary smile. It was obvious she was concerned. I would have told her that I'd much rather go home, but then I'd probably receive another speech about not giving up. Well, we could just enjoy our dinner for now, Fluttershy suggested. I think that would be nice, I said with a forced smile. I finally got the chance to look at the menu, and the waitress came to take our orders. As all was well, and we talked about trivial things like school and new song ideas, it really helped to get Twilight and Flash off my mind, if only for a little while. Of course, it didn't last, though. Suddenly, Pinky whispered, Code Yellow! and got up from the table. I watched as the waitress walked over to Twilight's table carrying a tray that held their meals. My eyes widened with realization. I got up after her. Pinky, no! I caught up 
to her just in time to push her out of the way, but I ran directly into the waitress, causing her to lose balance and let go of the tray. The plates fell off the tray and spilled their contents over Twilight, Flash, Rarity, and Blue Blood. Blue Blood shrieked so loudly that the whole restaurant went quiet, and all eyes were on us. This is all your fault! He yelled and threw a handful of beans at me. Except he missed, and hit the woman sitting in the chair behind me. The woman threw the contents of her plate in our direction, hitting me, Pinky, and Blue Blood, who was directly behind us. I heard someone shout, FOOD FIGHT! And food started flying everywhere. Who knew a bunch of adults could actually participate in a food fight? I hid under the table amidst the chaos, finding Rarity, who was hiding there as well. I don't suppose this was part of the plan? Rarity asked, trying to get some cheese out of her hair. There really wasn't... A plan to begin with. I know Pinky was going to try to mess up the meals, so I tried to stop her, and then this happened. I said sheepishly. Well, this entire situation has gotten out of control. Try to see if you can get a handle on it, darling. Maybe you can stop this before we all get in huge trouble with the manager. I'm pretty sure we were already in huge trouble with the manager by now, but I nodded and returned to the battlefield that was once a fancy restaurant. Through the chaos, I managed to make out Pinky, Applejack, and Rainbow fighting against Flash, Twilight, and Blue Blood. I couldn't tell who was taking it seriously and who wasn't. I also noticed that pretty much all the other customers had left. Waifu Stealer! Pinky yelled while throwing a multitude of tacos at Flash. What the heck is a waifu? He yelled back, dodging the first few tacos and getting hit in the face with the last two. He picked through the tacos that had missed him, throwing their contents back at Pinkie Pie, covering her dress. Stop fighting! I yelled into a fray, getting hit in the chest with... I don't even know, but it fell into my bra. The culprit turned out to be Flash, who yelled back, Weren't you the one who started it? It was an accident! I yelled in my defense. Damn you, Flash, why do you always have to be such a jerk? Twilight nodded and tried to help. Let's stop this before someone gets hurt! Blue Blood shouted next, while throwing fistfuls of food at my friends. I will not stop fighting until you peasants repent for ruining my suit! Your suit was ugly to begin with, Rainbow answered, returning his shots with her own. I think it looks a lot better now. They weren't listening to me. What could I do? I noticed Twilight next to me mutter, if only I had magic. I think that's what I miss most from Equestria, I said and smiled at her, only to remember the havoc in front of me when I got hit in the back with something slimy. Please stop, I yelled, cut off by a red sauce hitting me in the face. The substance got in my mouth and eyes, leaving a burning sensation. I coughed, unable to get the burning sensation out of my throat. I couldn't open my eyes either because they felt like they were being roasted by a thousand suns. I tried to get away from the fight, but I tripped over and landed in water. I must be in the fountain, I thought. The water helped clean the sauce off my face, so I emerged and opened my eyes. Though they still felt like they were on fire, I could see clearly. The fighting stopped as the girls noticed me sitting in the fountain. However, Blue Blood, being the diva that he is, was still throwing food around. Twilight helped me out of the fountain. Are you okay? Yeah, I choked out. I guess my throat was still burning, too. Suddenly, the manager stormed in with a couple of police officers, and I knew we were toast. Oh, thank goodness you came! Blue Blood exclaimed. You simply must do something about the vagrants. The manager glared at him. I'm going to have you kids fined for starting a food fight in my restaurant. The police gathered us up into one of the restaurant's back offices and told us to explain what happened. One of the officers went to another office to talk with the manager, and the other stayed to talk to us. I started. My friend Pinky and I were on our way to the bathroom, and I tripped and fell into the waitress, causing her to spill food on them. The policeman nodded, writing in his little notebook. What happened next? Blue Blood threw some food back at me, but it ended up hitting another customer instead. That's when things got out of control, I answered. He nodded again, writing it down. Now, Mr. Blue Blood, is what she says true? False! She obviously pushed the waitress because she wanted the food to fall on us! The police officer chewed on his pen. And why do you think that? Because she's evil! I know! Because she has a reputation at our school! I cringed. There went my hand on the situation. The cop raised an eyebrow. Does anyone else think Miss Shimmer may have pushed the waitress? Flash raised a ha his hand, and Twilight looked at him in shock. And why, Mr. Sentry, do you think that? The cop asked, still chilling on the end of his pen. Well, she has done some pretty crazy things in the past. Plus, she used to be my girlfriend, and I was on a date tonight with Twilight. I don't know for sure, but that could have had something to do with it, he explained. 
The police officer looked at me. Do you have anything to say about this, Miss Shimmer? I bit my lip. I used to be a different person, someone who would do anything she could to get what she wanted. I looked to Twilight and my friends, but these girls showed me that I was wrong and helped me to become a better person. As for Flash, I don't care who he dates. I didn't push the waitress. I had no reason to. It was an accident. The cop seemed to accept that and wrote it down in his notebook. Can we get the rest of you girls to verify that that, that is true? The girls responded with nods and a few variations of the word yes. I saw her push the waitress, though! Blue Blood exclaimed. Her arms were out like this! Blue Blood demonstrated, stretching his arms out in front of him. Did anyone else at the table see her push the waitress? The policeman asked. Flash answered. It kind of looked like she did from where I was sitting. Well, what about you, Miss Sparkle? And Miss Rarity, what did you two see? I really w wasn't paying attention at the time, Rarity confessed. I... Twilight hesitated and looked at me. I'm not too sure what I saw. I guess it kind of looked like she was pushing her, but she could have just been putting her arms out to get her balance. The cop turned to me after writing all that down in his book. Miss Shimmer, there are three accounts of people who claim you may have pushed the waitress. Would you like to explain? I didn't push the waitress, I said, my throat feeling raw. The look on the policeman's face told me that I was being, wasn't being very convincing. Miss Shimmer, it's illegal to lie to authorities. I suggest you explain what they saw. I swallowed hard and looked down at the floor. I felt like I was going to be sick. It would take me months to pay off this fine, but it would take you be even worse if the truth came out. I... She didn't push the waitress. She pushed me, Pinky said, cutting me off. She probably fell into the waitress after that. What reason would Miss Shimmer have to push you? The cop asked, putting his pen back in his mouth. Because I wanted to ruin their date. Pinky turned to me with a look of pain. I'm so sorry, Sunset, but I can't let you take the blame for all this. They have to know the truth. I looked at her in horror. No, Pinky, no, please don't tell them. Twilight shouldn't find out like this. I couldn't speak. My voice was caught in my throat. Pinky, Twilight asked, why are you trying to ruin our date? Pinky looked at the ground. Because it made Sunset really upset that you were going on a date with Flash, and I didn't want her to be sad anymore. She whimpered, and I realized that she'd begun to cry. And now I've made everything worse, because you're finding out about all of this from me instead of her in front of a policeman. She bawled, and Fluttershy hugged her, attempting to comfort her. My friends hung their heads and looked away, all except for Twilight, who was staring right at me. Sunset, why... Did my dating flash upset you? I felt tears forming in my eyes, and I did my best to keep them from coming, because I... I swallowed hard to keep my voice from shaking. Come on, Sunset, keep it together. M because... I love you. I saw her eyes widen, and before she could say anything, I shouted, I need to use the bathroom! And ran out of the office, tears streaming down my face. Luckily, the policeman didn't stop me. I made it to the bathroom and locked myself in the handicapped stall. The tears wouldn't stop coming. I looked at myself in the mirror and wiped my eyes. I looked absolutely terrible. My eye makeup had run all over my face, and my hair and dress were both littered with various kinds of food. I sat down against the wall facing the door, hugging my knees and letting myself cry. I heard the bathroom door open, and I groaned. I knew it was only a matter of time before someone came to check on me. Sunset. It was Twilight's voice. I heard her shoes click on the tile floor as she walked to my stall. Please let me in. I sniffled. Please leave me alone. I just want to talk, she answered. Please talk to me about this. I sobbed. I don't think there's much more to, for me to say. Okay, she said. If you don't want to talk, then I will. I need you to know that I love you too. My eyes widened and my breath hitched. You, you what I love you too. It took me longer to realize it. I like Flash, but my feelings for you are much stronger. For a while, the room was silent as I took in what just happened. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I had no idea that Twilight felt the same way. Finally, I got up and opened the door to let Twilight in. I was met by her embrace, and she let me cry into her shoulder. There were tears of sadness for the trouble we'd gotten in, but also tears of gratitude that my feelings for Twilight were returned by her. She rubbed my back and held me until I calmed down. 
She then took my face in her hands and wiped the rest of my tears from my eyes. My heart pounded from such a gentle touch, and from our faces being so close together. I stared into her eyes, as they stared right back into mine. I felt as though I would melt under her gaze. Our lips met. I felt my heart burst into fireworks. In that moment, I think I was the happiest person in the world. Twilight broke the kiss and gazed into my eyes, wanting more. She smiled. Why not we save the rest for another day? This time, I want to go on a date with you. I smiled and nodded. Okay. We walked back to the office hand in hand, though I was still a little embarrassed to look everyone, anyone in the eyes. Since the policeman now knew the whole story, he met with the other officer to tell him what happened and finished discussing what would be done with the manager. It was decided that since my knocking into the waitress was accidental, that Blue Blood's father would pay would have to pay the restaurant back. I gotta say I was pretty relieved that I wouldn't be the one to pay for it. After all, I'd have to pay for my apartment myself, and I'm pretty sure a rich family like his could spare the money. I can't believe this! Blue Blood shrieked. My father will be in contact with you soon, and he'll get you all fired! He told the police. They both just rolled their eyes and laughed at him. As for you, Rarity, I never want to see you or any of your friends again for as long as I live! Rarity just scoffed. I couldn't agree more. Blue Blood pulled out his phone and stormed off, likely calling his dad. I felt Flash staring at me and shrunk under his gaze. So, you like Twilight too, huh? Um, yeah. I said, looking at the ground. <laughs> well, I can't say I blame you. She is pretty amazing. I guess this explains a lot. I'm sorry for acting like kind of a jerk earlier. I looked at him in surprise. Um... Thanks. I'm sorry for... well, for all this. No hard feelings, he said with a smile. We all started to walk out of the building, and I noticed Pinky's pie sulking. Pinky, I started. I'm not mad at you, if that's what you're thinking. She sniffled. You're not? Of course not. I know that you were just looking out for me. You didn't mean for all this to happen. She pulled me into a hug. Thank you, Sunset. I'm so glad. So, Twilight... Do you want to try this again another time? Flash asked, looking at her nervously. She blushed and looked at the floor. I'm sorry, Flash, but no. You're really a nice guy, but I've already promised a date to someone else. They both looked at me. I blushed and looked away. I understand, he said with a sigh. Have a good date, you two. Thanks for understanding, Flash. I'm really sorry. It's fine, as long as we can still hang out as friends. He said with a smile. Twilight smiled. Of course, that would be great. We all went back to Rarity's house to get cleaned up. The other girls had got, already gotten permission from their parents to stay the night. All right, girls, when you finish changing, please give me your dresses and I'll put them in the laundry room. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get the stains out of all of them, but it's worth a try, Rarity announced. Also, be sure to shower and use as much soap and shampoo as you need. I know for certain that I'll need a bit of of time to get all of this cheese out of my hair, she added. Twilight, you can have the shower first, if you like, since you are the guest, Rarity offered. We could just let the lovebirds shower together. I'm sure they wouldn't mind, Rainbow smirked. I felt myself rin, and I punched her in the arm. She cackled evilly. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, uh, I'll just take my shower now, Twilight said and hurried off. I know she, too, had been blushing. Now, now, Rainbow, it's not polite to tease, Ray Rarity grinned. However, I apologize, Sunset, for this is only the beginning. Well, I guess they wouldn't really be my friends if they didn't tease me. You know, I think this night turned out okay after all. Sure, there was a food fight and the police thing, but we actually got Twilight and Sunset together. Applejack laughed and started to sit down in the, a pristine white couch chair. Rarity pushed her back up. No using the furniture until you're clean. You mean we can't sit down until we're clean? That ain't fair when there's only one shower, Applejack complained. Maybe we should have let them shower together if it meant we could sit down sooner, Rainbow groaned. Rarity sighed. Hold on a minute, I'll get us something to sit on. She returned to the room with a tarp and laid it on the floor. There, now you may sit. So, sunset, Rainbow started as well as sat down. I'm guessing your talk with Twilight ended pretty well. I blushed. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. Come on, darling, surely you can tell us a bit more than that. Oh, 
Well, she told me that she feels the same way and that she just hadn't realized it before. I looked down, feeling embarrassed. That's it? You're telling me you guys didn't kiss? How lame. Rainbow, sh shut up. I must have been as red as my hair at this point. I don't know, Rainbow. I don't think she'd be this red if they hadn't kissed. Applejack chuckled. Ugh. I buried my face in my hands. Ah, uh, calm down. We're just teasing. Rainbow said, putting a hand on my shoulder. We really aren't quite happy for you, dear. Rarity insisted. I appreciate it, but can we talk about something else? It's been a crazy night, I sighed. Why not play we play a board game? Candyland is my favorite, Pinky exclaimed. I'll check to see what games we have, Rarity said and left the room. The night ended in fun and we continued playing Candyland until all of us had a chance to wash up. Pinky Pie was the first to fall asleep. She nodded off in the middle of the game and none of us had the heart to wake her. As for myself, I'm pretty sure I fell asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. I woke to the sound of laughter. Hey, look at the lovebirds! Aw, they're so cute! Quite down, dears. We shouldn't ruin a moment like this. I tried to get up, only to feel someone's arm around me, and when I opened my eyes, I discovered that Twilight and I were snuggled close together. I wish that I had noticed this before the girls did, because I really didn't want to leave this embrace. Twilight began to stir, light, likely awoken by all the noise as well. She grew red when she noticed how close we were. The hug broke immediately to my disappointment. Good morning! I'm assuming you both slept well, Pinky exclaimed. What do you girls want to do today? Twilight frowned. Actually, I think it's about time I get back. I'm sorry I can't spend time with you at all, but I told my friends back home that we'd have some fun today because I was missing their hearts and hooves day party. Rarity gave a sad smile. That's all right, darling. I actually have a bit of homework to do before school tomorrow anyway. Though it's rather saddening that our time together has been short. Twilight nodded. I'll be sure to visit more frequently. Thanks for understanding. All of my friends escorted Twilight from the parking lot to the front of the building, and Twilight and I stayed at the back of the group. I wish you could stay, I sighed. I know, she replied, but you all have responsibilities with your schooling here, and I have responsibilities back in Equestria as well. I want to go back to Equestria too, I sighed. It would be really nice to be home again, and then we wouldn't have to be apart. She took my hand. Don't worry, we'll see each other again soon. Next Saturday. I was hoping you'd show me more around this world. I haven't seen much more about than this school, and I'm pretty sure there's much more for me to learn. I smiled. Okay, that sounds like fun. We reached the statue all too soon, and Twilight made sure to give everyone a hug goodbye. I'm going to miss you, I whispered as she gave me one last hug. I felt her lips brush my cheek, and I blushed. I'm going to miss you, too. We parted, and she waved to us as she walked to the portal. I'll see you all again soon, I promise. My heart ached as she disappeared through the portal. She hadn't been gone for more than a few seconds, and I already missed her. I knew that I would be counting the days until she returned, and then I would definitely make plans for our day out together. Though it was hard to say goodbye to Twilight, I was glad that it wasn't goodbye. She would be coming back soon, and I couldn't be happier. And that was A Valentine's Catastrophe by FriedChicken96 on FemFiction.net. Thank you for listening, everypony. Apparently, the story's still marked incomplete. He says he's going to be writing an epilogue to it, so I might do that. Though I'm not sure. It's been a couple of months since he posted the story, so I don't know if he's planning on it. But I hope he does. Go leave a comment on his page to tell him what an awesome job he did, or leave a like and comment in the, uh, in the below the video. Sorry, it's kind of late and I can't think right now. <laughs> Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed, and the next time you see me, it'll be in another Final Noctavia University Days. Alright, thanks for listening. Stay brony, everybody.